Today on Motors, Chris finishes the exterior of our 2000 Ford Ranger project truck, and Alan heads to the Southwest to test drive the all new Land Rover Discovery. So buckle up and hold on tight because Motors starts now. In the last episode of Motors, you saw the sad shape of this 2000 Ford Ranger pickup and how I started its makeover with a new bed liner and cat back exhaust kit. Well today I'm not holding back because the exterior will be completed. I'm going to show you how to install new wheels and tires, new front and rear bumpers along with a winch, new headlights and new taillights and off-road lights, a new front grille, some fender flares and even some paint. Well this episode is so packed, let's get right into it. The aftermarket wheels and 31 inch tires that came with this poor abused Ranger have seen better days. I was eager to change it up. Now we're talking, this 31 inch SS M16 tire from Interco Tire Corporation is the perfect match with this blade cut Moab 17 inch wheel from Hostile Wheels. This 31 inch Interco SS M16 tire looks aggressive, but what's cool about it is that it's perfect for on and off road in all seasons. They took the best features from their best performing all-terrain and mud-terrain tires and created this highway-friendly and very quiet tire that has great off-road performance. They call it a hybrid tire because it bridges the gap between the all-terrain and very aggressive off-road tires and has a rugged design that will enhance the appearance of any vehicle, especially our Ranger Project truck. The SSM16 is a radial tire and available in sizes 31 to 40 for wheels ranging from 15 to 24 inches. Now for the wheels on this truck, I went with the 17x9 blade cut Moab from Hostile Wheels. They match the aggressiveness of the tires and are perfect for our off-road pickup truck. The black Moab wheels feature angular styling, wide lips, and some chrome accents that go perfectly with the white paint of the Ranger. Now I want to give a huge thanks to not just Interco Tires and Hostile Wheels for helping resurrect the Ranger, but also Manny from Big O Tires in San Diego for mounting and balancing them. For more information on the tires, go to intercotire.com, and for the wheels, go to hostilewheels.com. Now when we return from our break, I'm going to show you how to install some new bumpers. <laughs> Now next up are the bumpers. They're not in bad shape overall outside of being weathered for 17 years, but they need to go and I want something more aggressive. Iron Bull Bumpers located in Arizona hand delivered a new set of their beefy all steel bumpers for the Ranger. The Motor Studio in San Diego is just one stop on their long road trip. After picking out the options I wanted at their website, which include different styles of protection bars and various light mounting options, they were delivered right to me with tons of packing material. They can weigh up to 180 pounds, so make sure you have some help. After carefully removing all the packing material, I was finally able to see how beefy these things were. Made from the highest grade A36 descaled premium 3 16 inch steel, the slightly rubberized black shield coating prevents scratches and dents for years. Not only are there built-in 5-inch light cutouts, but there's a winch mount for the largest winches on the market. I'll soon be installing PIA lights and a super winch to fill those holes. Removing the stock front bumper was really easy, just a few bolts. I couldn't wait to get it off. Now Iron Bull Bumpers provides all the hardware you need, however you will need to reuse your factory hardware. So save all those nuts and bolts because you're gonna need them. After installing the two frame mounted brackets loosely, it was time to mate them with the front bumper. After making some adjustments for alignment, tighten all the bolts down. There's enough room to mount the winch after the bumper is installed, so I'll get to that later. Yeah. I just love the sound of ripping off old parts, don't you? Now like the front bumper, the rear was also easy to remove. Check out the difference between the two though, there's just no comparison. Oh yeah, the rear hitch wasn't compatible with the bumper, so we'll have to figure out another solution later. Installing the two rear brackets is easy, just like the front, reusing the factory hardware. And like the front, I recommend you not tighten them all the way down. Give it some wiggle room until you get the bumper on, then seal the deal. Now doesn't that look incredible? Iron Bull bumpers are available for most trucks and SUVs. Their website is full of photos too. So head on over to ironbullbumpers.com and see what's available for your rig. 
With the aggressive black bumpers, wheels, and tires added, I wanted the truck to look more aggressive too. So I used some spray-on bed liner after taping off the lower third of the truck. It's a simple DIY mod that makes a huge difference on an old truck like this. Plus, it was fun to do. This is just the first few coats. You'll see the finished paint job later. Now, back up front was a big problem. The headlights were mismatched. One was an HID conversion, and the other one wasn't. They just look stupid. My friends at Spider Auto came to my rescue with their LED taillights and projector headlights that feature an LED halo. Now, they don't make the side marker lights, so I bought some online and went with the completely clear look. The front lights have a connector for the factory wiring harness and two wires that connect to your side marker lights to illuminate the LED halo. To remove the headlights, grab some needle nose pliers and pull out the headlight clips. They can be a bit snug, so wiggle them loose or grab some lubricant. It might save you from some expletives. All that's holding the side marker lights on are these two fasteners at the bottom, so grab a Phillips screwdriver, remove them, and it'll come free. Then all you have to do is twist to remove the three bulbs. So here's the problem I caused myself by going with a completely clear side marker light assembly. Well, the factory bulbs are clear, so I had to go to my local auto parts store and pick up two amber bulbs so that my lights would stay street legal. To remove the headlights, just give them a firm tug and they will pop right out. Install the Spider Auto Light using the factory connector. To make the LED halo light functional, connect the black wires, then the red to the white wire. I just use some PosiTap connectors, but you can use any other method that you prefer. The headlights have plenty of ways to adjust for alignment, so make sure you align your headlights before hitting the road at night. You can watch the episode on how to align your headlights for some additional tips. After putting the bulbs back in and securing the new lights down, test everything out. Wow, what a huge difference from what was there before. Gone are the mismatched headlights, Cyclops HID and hazy lenses, and it looks way more modern. Well, now that I'm done up front and my nightmare is over, I want to make the same difference to the taillights, so let's head to the back. The Spider Auto taillights for the Ranger are modern as well and feature LED brake lights. All that you need is a Phillips screwdriver to install. Begin by dropping the tailgate and removing the two fasteners on the inside with a Phillips driver, then the two on the outside. The taillight will come free after that. Remove the two factory bulbs. For the brake light, use only the four wire connector on the Spider Auto taillight. Then make sure you match the black wire to the black wire of the factory bulb socket. Install the clear bulb and then the completed light assembly. Grab a buddy to help you test it out and make sure everything's working properly. To check out more styles of lights for the Ford Ranger and many other vehicles, go to spiderauto.com. With the stock grill being the way that it is, I wanted to improve the look without having to rip it all apart. A quick solution came from Paramount Automotive and this fantastic looking cover-up grill. It installs right over the top of the factory grill using the provided hardware. Using a 732nd socket, remove the fasteners at the top of the grill. It'll come free after that. Loosely install the provided hardware onto the new grill, place it on top of the factory grill, and then flip them both upside down together. You'll need to drill some small holes just big enough for the provided fasteners in order to secure the other end of the bracket to the grill. Tighten everything down, then reinstall. It's that easy, kids. Now, for more information on all their grills that they sell or all their other products, visit paramount-automotive.com. Now, for that big old off-road bumper I just installed, I wanted a big old winch for when I get stuck off-roading. This Talon 12.5 SR from Super Winch should do the trick. The winch of prey, as they call it, bolts right in. Then it was just a matter of snaking the positive and negative cables up to the battery and securing everything down. The SR in the 12.5 SR part of the product name refers to the included synthetic rope as opposed to a steel cable. I had to spool that onto the roller, which is a piece of cake. Just make sure you're wearing some gloves so you don't get rope burn. Check out the Talon and all their other winches at superwinch.com. Now for those gaping holes in the front of the Iron Bull bumper and the rear too, I picked up this LP530 3.5 inch LED driving light kit. One set for the front and one for the rear. Now these are super easy to install using the provided hardware and the mounting tabs for the lights on the bumpers. All that's left to do is to wire them up. Now you can check out a previous episode of Motors on auxiliary light installation for the step by step. For now, head over to Pia.com to see their complete product line of driving lights, fog lights, bulbs, light bars, and more. 
The stock fender flares just weren't aggressive enough, so off they went to be replaced by Bushwhacker pocket style fender flares, which I also painted with the same bed liner spray. Yeah! The first thing I did was to install the edge trim on all four fender flares. Easy. Next, install the provided fastener, washer, and nut on all the flares using a Torx T45 driver. This is just for looks. Align the flare up to the fender well of the truck and mark the holes with a grease pencil. Then install the provided spring clips after placing the black tabs in place. Attach the flare to the truck using the provided hardware and you're good to go. After repeating three more times, of course. Bushwhacker makes fender flares for most trucks and SUVs in different styles too. Go to bushwhacker.com to check them all out. After the break, Alan heads to the Southwest to test drive the all new Land Rover Discovery. So stay tuned, we'll be right back. If it's your car, why not make it your interior? Transform the look, feel, and quality of your interior with cat skin leather, the world leader in custom automotive interiors. Visit catskin.com today to find out how easy and affordable it is to get a cat skin premium leather interior for your vehicle. Cat skin, express, transform, drive. Now this time, Alan's out in the crazy off-road playground of Southern Utah, test driving the new Land Rover Discovery. The landscape is beautiful, and so is the new Land Rover. Take it away, Alan. Well, for today's adventure, we're headed out to the American Southwest to test drive the all-new 2017 Land Rover Discovery. The beautiful coral pink sand dunes of Southern Utah is our test ground for the new Discovery. The shifting coral red sands and craggy rock formations make for the perfect landscape to put the Discovery through its paces. And for our time in the desert, we'll be staying at the Amangiri Luxury Resort. Built into the landscape, Amangiri is a beautifully designed modern resort with sweeping views of the surrounding canyons. And the top tier chefs at Amangiri provide meals on par with the best restaurants in the world. Suffice it to say, I've been looking forward to my stay here. The 2017 Land Rover Discovery launches in the States this summer and will be offered in both five and seven seat configurations. Starting at around $50,000, the Discovery comes with an eight speed automatic transmission that is paired with either a three liter V6 engine with 340 horsepower or a turbo diesel with 258 horsepower, but it has 443 pound feet of torque. And over the next few days, I'll be taking both for a ride. first thing that pops out to me is how comfortable this thing is, and we're driving over huge boulders. Land Rover boasts that seven adults can all fit comfortably in the new Discovery. Even with a full load, this machine has plenty of power with either one of these two V6 engines. That is largely due to the aluminum body and the aerospace levels of engineering that went into this machine. The 2017 Discovery is so light and efficient that for the first time ever, Land Rover will actually offer a four-cylinder model. So Phil, being the studio director for the exterior design of this new Discovery, the front end, it, it has a very powerful look to it. Yeah. And I know that the coefficient of drag on this vehicle is amazing. How did you achieve that? Well, it's a, a huge number of small improvements from 0.4 for the previous vehicle to a CD of 0.33. Wow. To give you an example, these outboard intakes, this is all about taking this fast-flowing air that hits the front of the vehicle, channeling it through the corner of the bumper, and it exits through the wheel arch as effectively an invisible curtain of air over the front tire. And, you know, everywhere you look on the vehicle, there's uh, examples of fine-tuning of aero performance around the mirrors, the gap between the mirror and the front glass that's gone through numerous iterations of tuning the angles between the two surfaces. So you get not just an improvement in the coefficient of drag, you get lower wind noise. And the wind noise on this car is terrific, actually. This Discovery is handling this wild terrain like, well, a Land Rover. Land Rover has always been the king of off-road vehicles, and they continue that legacy with the new 2017 Discovery. With 11.1 inches of ground clearance and the Discovery's Terrain Response 2 controller that allows the driver to choose throttle, transmission, and traction control settings to best suit their current terrain, it's no surprise that the Discovery showed the Coral Sands who's boss. 
Land Rover wanted this SUV to be more than just an off-road beast. Alex Heslop, chief engineer of the 2017 Discovery, had the unenviable task of making this not only a world-class off-road vehicle, but also a versatile family car. So Alex, you're the chief engineer of the new Discovery. What was the number one most difficult thing you had to do to, to create a vehicle that would fill the expectations of Land Rover owners? We said we wanted to create the world's most capable, because it's a Land Rover, and versatile, because it's a Discovery SUV. It took me personally and the team uh, around us quite a while to get our heads around what did that versatility mean. And it came through watching people through market research use LR4 and use uh, some of the premium competitors, so the Q7s, the X5s, uh, XC90s. And what we started to see is that people that bought these cars have families, they have lots of activities, and they want to be able to carry lots of people and lots of things in comfort. First and foremost, we through the research on LR4, found that people didn't know how to use those seats. They were too complicated. And so was born the intelligent seat fold system. Something that means that you can reconfigure the car from a, a load lugger to a, a seven seat car in, in, in around 14 seconds. 21 different configurations of seats. And so starts to come through the, the versatility in the seating. Discovery is a renowned tow car. We wanted to continue that with the new generation. We said we wanted to make this car the only premium SUV that can carry or tow the maximum weight in any market. So for the US that's 8,000 pounds, for the rest of the world that's three and a half tons. And this car can do that. Uh, and, and so that was born as well, to, to really make this a, a nice uh, family car. My few days with this Discovery have made one thing perfectly clear. This vehicle can take almost any terrain that you can throw at it. Whether it's sand, rocks, streams, it doesn't matter. But it also has to be a family-friendly SUV on par with all of the top luxury vehicles currently on the market. With the 2017 Discovery, Land Rover has engineered a lighter, more efficient SUV without sacrificing off-road capability or power. And they've done it with style, creating one of the nicest looking SUVs on the market. The Discovery truly has it all, and it is on my short list for the best car of 2017. Back to you, Chris. Parts. Brought to you by Craftsman. Now when it comes to having the right tools for your shop, not only does that mean having the best hand power and air tools to get the job done, but also other tools to get you out of a jam. Now what I'm talking about are those old rusty bolts, which no matter how hard you try with your tools to break loose, they can be extremely stubborn. Now if you aren't careful and you use too much force when you're trying to remove them, you'll break the head right off and you'll be in an even worse situation having to drill the rest of the bolt out. Yep, I've been there. Now that doesn't happen anymore to me and it won't happen to you once you pick up a can of PB Blaster. This product is specifically designed for working on rusty nuts and bolts or anything that's rusted that you need to break free. It's important to note that this is a penetrant, not a lubricant. You just spray it on and let it work a bit so that it has time to get into all the threads and spaces where the rust is. This process is called wicking and the longer you let PB Blaster do its job, the better it will work. Now let's head back to the workbench and I'll show you what I mean. In this container filled with PB Blaster, I've got an extremely rusty bolt sticking straight up. This vertical wicking test is the best test I can think of because it also has gravity working against it. Watch how it creeps or wicks its way up the threads of the bolt and right through the rusted on nut. Now as you can see, after 30 minutes of this test, PB Blaster is somehow magically defying gravity and after two hours, it's wicked right through the nut and then some. Now I know you're not gonna wait two hours for anything, but then again, you aren't gonna be doing a vertical wicking test like this. Most likely you're gonna be like me, spraying it all over the place. So stop using that other stuff and start using PB Blaster. This is the real deal, guys. I mentioned earlier that this is not a lubricant. Well, if you do need a lubricant, guess what? They have that too. In fact, they not only have a multi-purpose lubricant, but others as well, including white lithium grease, silicone lubricant, graphite lubricant, dry lube with Teflon, chain and cable lubricant, and other products such as a citrus degreaser, small engine tune-up, an air tool conditioner, brake cleaner, fuel injector cleaner, and so much more. These guys literally have it all. Now for more information, visit blastercorp.com and click on the products link at the top of the page. 
E3 Diamond Fire Spark Plugs are the most powerful spark plugs you can buy. They deliver a more complete fuel burn, more power, better economy, and reduced emissions. E3 Diamond Fire Spark Plugs at auto parts and lawn and garden stores everywhere. Letters brought to you by E3 Spark Plugs. Born to burn. Hey, welcome to Letters. Now this episode is so jam-packed, let's get right to a question. But first, I gotta give a huge thumbs up for this really cool Ford Shop shirt from Genuine Hot Rod Hardware. Thanks, guys. Now this letter comes from Tyler Ross. Hi, Chris. Thanks for listening. I have a 1982 GMC 4x4, and I want to replace the shocks. Which shocks are the best to use? Well, Tyler, first I want to thank you for being my first audio letter. I encourage everyone else to send one in because it makes the letters segment a little bit more personable. You can go to motors.tv slash letters to learn how to do it. You can also send your letter in video format as well so everyone can see you asking your question and you can be on TV too. Now back to Tyler's question about shocks for an 82 GMC 4x4. I did some research and found that there's quite a bit of options out there for you, which is probably why you asked me. Well, based on my personal experience with several of the brands that I found, here is my recommendation. It's the M95 Performance Monotube Shock from Skyjacker. It's very similar to what I have on my truck right now. This is a higher end shock that's a little bit more expensive than the cheapos, you, you know the ones I'm talking about. But the saying does hold true. You get what you pay for, and if you don't want to keep replacing your shocks every few years, take my suggestion. I've also done something for you since I'm a huge Amazon Prime junkie. I've created a direct link to the Amazon product page just for you. You can go visit our site at motors.tv, find this episode and click the link on the page or go to this link, it's easy to remember too, motors.tv slash Tyler Ross. Now today's letter segment is a quick one, but please send in your questions for me by going to the Motors TV website and like Tyler, you can get free E3 spark plugs for your ride if I answer your question on the show. Now to learn more about its Diamond Fire technology or to see if they're available for your ride, just visit e3sparkplugs.com. Now that the exterior of this 2000 Ford Ranger project vehicle is complete with an exhaust, bed liner, bumpers, winch, lights, grill, new wheels and tires, fender flares, and even some rattle can, it really looks incredible. The same cannot be said, however, for the interior. It actually looks kind of nasty. So coming up in the next episode of Motors is part three and the completion of the Ranger. I'm gonna start it off by getting rid of the grime and then do a little bit of cover up. Now to learn more about all the products featured in this episode or to watch all previous episodes, just visit our website. I'll catch you next time on Motors. After removing the tail light, watch out for little critters like this spider. What's he doing? What are you doing, Spider Man? Oh, he's a fat boy.